Hi guys. Uh, so today we will talk about a string buffer and a string builder class. So this both classes are used in Java for a string manipulation. So here I've created the simple uh, object for buffer and builder, and I'm just passing one string. So the most common method used in both uh, classes is append. So you can append any uh, string to your existing string. So if I'm passing here and then we can convert this object to string. So if I'm doing object string buffer dot to string, so it will basically give me the concatenated string. So if I run this, so it will give me buffer object. And the same thing works for a builder also. So both have the common uh, method. So we'll run this one. So you will see uh, both the strings are coming here. So you have to remember one thing. So whenever you initialize the object, right, the length of this object will be 16 plus length of your string in the constructor. So in this case, our length is a uh, six. So the total length of this object will be 16 plus six. Uh, so it will be 22, right? So we can use capacity method here to actually check the length. So if I do it here and I will run this one. So if you see here, the capacity of our object is 22. And the next commonly method used is insert method. So if I go here and see insert and if I want to insert in the starting, let's say buffer, right? So if I will run this now, so it will insert the buffer in the starting of my string. The most important concept, right? Uh, string buffer, if you see here, I will go to append method. So the append method or all the methods, if you will see in the string buffer class are synchronized. Like that's why string buffer is thread safe. Right. Uh, so it's good for multi threading environment because it provides a support for synchronization. And if I go to string builder methods, uh, so there is no support for synchronize. All methods are simple. Right. So that's why string builder should be used for single thread. Right. Environment. And that's why string builder is faster than string buffer. So if interviewer will ask you, can you show me the code snippet which will prove that a uh, string buffer is thread safe, right? And string builder is not. So I will remove all this code. So let's write uh, the multi-threading code. So I have one object string builder here. So let me create a thread. Right? So just created the thread and inside this, I can have a loop. So here I have written the loop which will run thousand times and it will append, let's say any character A to this a string builder object. Okay. So if I go here, copy the method, so I will create the other thread which will also do the same thing and it will also append one character, let's say B to the same uh, string builder object. Okay. So now I will start this thread, then I will start the other thread. And now once it is started, so what I will do, so I will wait for both the threads to complete. So I will write exception. Okay. So once both the threads are, you know, completed, then let's see uh, what's the length of our object. So if I go here and I will say dot to string dot length, right? So ideally, if you see the thousand times A should get append and the thousand time B should get append, right? So if I run this code, the ideal, ideal output, which we are expecting is 2000, right? So if I run this, the output is becoming, output is coming 1819. So that means somewhere when the multi-threading was happening, right? Uh, it didn't happen as expected. So that's why we never use a string builder when it comes to multi-threaded environment. So if I simply change this string builder to string buffer, okay? And then I will not change anything else. So if I will run this now, so if you see what we were expecting is 2000 and 2000 is coming here, right? So that's why string buffer is always used when it comes to multi-threading. So that's it. If you have not subscribed the channel, you can subscribe and you can share it with your friends if you uh, found it helpful.